What do you do when your outside looks good, but on the inside, you're just a bunch of broken pieces? Hey, and welcome to the Summerbrook Takeaway. I'm Tanner Treffin, joined by Pastor Joey Rumble, and we're breaking down, are you living and low to bar? Yeah. Message from this past Sunday, and man, it was good. We talked about you might look good on the outside, but you're broken on the inside. Well, let me tell you, Mephibosheth didn't look good on the outside or the inside. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, we talked about his story. And, and yeah, he was crippled in both feet, and he, he felt so broken. He said, what is it, a dead dog like me? Yeah. And, and so you have really did a good job, I feel like, leaning into our brokenness. Uh, they're just the brokenness of being a human and living in this world. We all got wounds, whether big wax or little lax, and, and we all got things to deal with. Yeah, and we've all been dropped. I mean, every one of us have been dropped. It's just for all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So it's, and, and not only that, a lot of us, we've dropped others at times in our life, not meaning to, but yeah, we've all... So we're a work in progress, needing to find healing in the Lord. Because it's easy to clean up the outside, but the inside, we gotta, we got to heal. And the body of Christ can really help one another do that. Yeah. And so I think that first question you asked, where have you been dropped, is so important. Because a lot of times we either know we've been dropped or we don't really realize how big that drop had an impact on, on how we're reacting right now. And you talked about how we could... Uh, talk to our best friends, a spouse, a, a close parent, or these people that know you well can kind of help you see those areas where you've been blinded. And an overreactiveness. Yeah, like I, ha- I was saying bye to a person at church Sunday, and he, he, he lashed out at me in a humorous way, saying just, you know, that point really uh, <laughs> leaned in there. That's good. It's, it's, it's quick on his feet. Um, and so you said the reason Mephibosheth is struggling now because someone dropped him in the past. That, that's really what we're hitting on right now. Oh, yeah. It's a great sign if you to know you're wounded. If, man, it's something in the past. Also, looking back, if it's something that continues to be, so this, uh, I'm Irish, so I have a bad temper. No. No, you have a bad temper because there's something broken on the inside of you. Mm. And so we're not here to blame. We're here to reclaim. Amen to that. Uh, that's so good. Um, you have to... And this is hard. I feel like, you know, it's pretty uncomfortable to go back and think back at your past moments. And I know exercise I've done before dealing with past woundedness is taking the time to sit down and write down what are the 10 biggest worst moments of your life. And that that is not fun to think back on. Yeah. And so one of my biggest was sharing the father wound, how my father dropped us. But and, and there was a lot he did well. But there were so many things that he missed, and he did a lot of dropping, drops. But looking back on his past and his broken family, he came from a broken home where when his parents uh, moved away to another state, he was like 15, 16. He wanted to stay where they were. He ended up staying with someone else and not even moving with his parents in his teen years. It shows you the brokenness how the brokenness of family can carry on. Yeah, and so, and so we really want to lean into small groups and our brothers and sisters in Christ to find healing in these areas because we talk about like, we're, we're wounded in a relationship, but we're also healed in a relationship. And I've heard it said that he who is the most honest gets healed the quickest. Oh, that's, that's good. I think that's, that's so true. Hurt people hurt people, but healed people heal people. I think one of the greatest testimonies of the church healing one another, Larry Crabb, who is one of the greatest, in my humble opinion, Christian uh, counselors there is, wrote in his book, Connecting, that he believes that a lot of times we overemphasize counseling at the expense of how much healing is right in the church. When you share uh, your, your open hearts and, and there's healing when you're in a place where you're safe and you're loved. Matt, let me go one more. I was in a, uh, working on my master's in professional counseling degree, did all the coursework, but I didn't do the practicum and internship because I, I just had a scholarship. I didn't feel the desire to be a counselor, but I, I loved the coursework because it really helped me in pastoring. But here was the head of the counseling department who said his wife, is, who's not a licensed counselor or, or trained in it like this guy, this gentleman's professional, said his wife's one of the greatest counselors he's ever seen because she's an incredible listener. So if we're going to, and no degree, nothing, he would, but she's an amazing marriage counselor. <clears throat> so I think we need to learn how to listen well to provide healing for others internally in the body of Christ. That's good. And so we need to find people who we can trust, but also be that, that good listener who's trustworthy to others. Absolutely. Well. Where, there's, where you're a place, people can come to you that you're safe and you're loved. That's good. 
Um, so you talked about next that we are that you are invited to the king's table, and this is really Mephibosheth's story. And, and so, do you want to give a quick reminder of how he gets from being in Lodabar, that place of brokenness, to be invited? to Yeah. The king's so you table? got you got um, the, his nurse drops him when when uh, Saul and Jonathan are killed because they were scared they were going to be killed, but that the nurse didn't know David's heart, which was really cool because Craig Yoho shared recently about there was a difference between Saul's heart and David's heart. And my wife brought up today and our team leads, what a great indication because Saul was literally trying to kill David so he wouldn't take his throne. And here is an example where David wasn't going to kill. So a great contrast of the heart right there. But so the nurse drops uh, Mephibosheth. He ends up being crippled. And then he ends up being in Lodabar, a place which means of desolation, aloneness. And then King David is like, man, is there anyone I can do good to from the house of Jonathan for Jonathan's sake? And uh, which he had a son named Mephibosheth who was dropped. And so then the king calls to him and immediately gives him back all his grandfather's land, servants, Ziba and all his family servants took care of um, uh Mephibosheth, and what I love that drives it home so much is he was invited to the king's table every day to eat with the king. Yeah. And one day, like that, or it might have been a two days journey, one or two days, it just like that, it, his life has changed. Yeah, and don't count God short. He can do that. He did it for yeah. Mephibosheth, and he can change our life just like that um, by the power of the cross. And, and, and no God. Go ahead. And knowing that we're invited to the king's table, and and one of the points you said is keep sitting at the king's table daily. Yes, um, we just gotta keep showing up, keep doing the reps. Of don't get tired of spending time in God's word. Don't get t change it up, change what book you're reading in in the Bible, whatever. Get other people, just change things up if you get a little bored. But man, we gotta keep showing up in intimacy with Christ. Mm. So good. And then you kind of, I feel like, had three uh, or three reflection questions here at the, at the end to really see where you are. And, these, and I'm just going to read them all together. It says, are you living in Lodabar? Are you sitting at the king's table? So you in that isolation uh, down place, are you putting yourself in the king's table? Are you looking at your feet, your woundedness, or are you looking at the king? And which one, defi which one will define you, the king in front of you or your wounds behind you in your past? Yeah, and all three are powerful statements, but I think the third one is, you know, which one, read the third one again, which one will define you? The king in front of you or the wounds in the past? I, I, it's just so memorable. Like, uh, so we got, we got to deal with them, but then let's heal them and keep our eyes on Jesus, focus our, our eyes on the Lord and his healing for our lives. And then did you want to hit on um, a part of the story with Mephibosheth and Ziba that we didn't get to? Yeah, we, I didn't have time for this, uh, but there's a, a scene later on where I believe Ziba uh, tricks Mephibosheth and trying to help have David think that Mephibosheth turned on him. In actuality, I think Ziba, and so he, the, the, it ends up being split between Ziba and Mephibosheth. But at the end, I believe Mephibosheth shows his true heart that he was, he goes, King, I don't need any of it. I'm just glad the king is safe. Mm. And so it was, a, it was just a cool story. I didn't get to share it because we didn't have enough time to dig into that. We had baptism Sunday. Shout out to everyone that got yeah, baptized. Great job. Man, that was just awesome. awesome yeah. Part but, of but anyway, that's another part of Zeba in the story. Yeah, that's actually, uh, I meant Zeba and Mephibosheth. That's actually one of my favorite verses, just to have that type of posture, attitude of God, like, take everything. I don't care. As long as I got you. Like, I, that's how I want my heart to be with God, that, that God, you are my everything. Everything else is worthless com compared to knowing you. Mm -hmm. It was cool seeing, uh, moving back to baptism, it was cool seeing the teenagers baptized, mm -hmm. kids baptized, adults baptized, all the stories of life change, just so exciting. Yeah, shout out to the greeters and the parking lot team that uh, Aaron mentioned. That was just so cool in her testimony. Mm -hmm. And then and then the eighth grader who got baptized. Christian. A Christian. I saw him greet someone in the youth ministry on a Wednesday night, two Wednesday nights ago. I was like, wow, this was the first time this guy had come to youth. And he was such a, I was like, man, I was just so impressed with uh, his, his uh, welcoming spirit to people. It was cool to see him get baptized. Yeah, that was awesome. I'm proud of him. He's doing good stuff. Um, so what was your takeaway? My biggest takeaway is to keep showing to, up to the king's table. That, that just keep doing it. Uh, I thought that was incredible, uh, for, uh, just a, a reminder for me.
Yeah, mine was probably when Dakota, shout out to Dakota, you did an awesome worship moment then, and you can watch that worship clip on YouTube. Um, and just to continue to come to God in, in, a, in a heart posture of worship to the King. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. I think another takeaway for me is the healing that is at in the family of God, where we can join each other in healing. So that's huge. And hey, but, uh, this Sunday, we're launching into a new series fo- uh, totally about the uh, Jesus Christ coming to earth to save us from our sins called The Arrival. So we're going to be in our Christmas series. Matter of fact, shout out to everyone to help uh, set up the church and and give it a Christmas environment. It's, it's going to be awesome series as we look at the arrival, Jesus coming to save us from our sins. And happy Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving week. Uh, everyone have an amazing Thanksgiving. And, so and Merry Christmas. Let's just skip right over Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're excited to celebrate So what Jesus. are you thankful for? Uh, man, so much. Everything. The salvation, my family, working at the church. Life's great. Praise yeah. God. Yeah, I, I'm thankful for being able to sit at the King's table. Uh, thankful for health. Uh, thank you. Thankful for our team that we divide the work up of the kingdom and, and everyone in the church building the kingdom is exciting. Awesome. Cool. So church, what are you thankful for? Happy Thanksgiving. And also, what is your takeaway? Let's walk in it together. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening.